Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus another hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in his presence. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'll check my time. I have to catch a flight right after this. I forgot. Well, I'm, I'm sure I have enough time. So anyway, while we were in Hawaii, it was... Uh, it was a conference for all the pastors and all the leaders of the whole state of Hawaii, the Assembly of God, and the so all they all flew it from all the islands, and we had a great time. But that made a word in my heart to share with them, and I felt like to share with you guys also, because I'm speaking to leaders. Amen? I'm speaking to leaders this morning. Whether you are doing something, but I felt like whatever area, whatever you are, I believe, when you come to Christ, when you come to God, you are a leader. Amen? Yes. So anyway, the yes. Asa Scripture is found in the book of um, Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. It says, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation. And all earth, and all earth, will be blessed through him. Yeah. This is a prophetic word that God gave Abraham. And you and I are the sons and daughters of Abraham. Amen? Yeah. Therefore, these words are for you and I. In other words, we surely become great and powerful. Say, I'm great. I'm great. And I'm powerful. I'm powerful. Yes, that's what God said about you and I. When he called you and I, set us free from sin, he said, you will be great and you will be powerful. Amen. Amen? Not timid, not fear, not glory, Amen. not filled with anxiety, depressed. Amen. He didn't say that. He said, no, you'll be great and you will be powerful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. We have to think that way. Otherwise, we will not fulfill what he called us to do. Yes. I mean, you're standing up. I mean, there were three, four speakers yes. that were there at the conference. Two of them was John and I. The other two, they both have, they are doctor. <laughs> and I found myself standing over there and said, my God, how did I get on this stage? <laughs> One of them was representing uh, John Maxwell. And a lot of people all over the, the world knew who he was. Yeah. Dr. Ron McManus. And I found myself, John and I opened up the conference of that first night. Yeah. And I have to keep telling myself, Mariana, you are great. <laughs> <laughs> and you are powerful. If I think of, well, you don't have the education. <laughs> if you think you came from Tucson. <laughs> if I think of all my mistakes, all the things that I, all the things, all my crisis and all my problems, there's no way I can stand up and speak to thousands of leaders that morning. But I, because I have to tell myself, Mariana, you are great and you are powerful. So I was able to stand up over there that morning and the next two, that, that night and the next two morning. Amen? But listen what he said. The next sentence he said, and through you, all nations on earth will be blessed. Yes. Think that way. And I have to tell them, listen, the reason why you're a pastor, the reason why you're a leader, because he said that through you, all nations will be blessed. That means your family, your church, your city, Tucson is blessed because of you and I. Yes. Come on, you have to think that way. Amen? Otherwise, you'll be so caught up in your mistake. You'll be so caught up. I don't have the money. You'll be so caught up. Look at that only the church. It's not even full. And here I'm speaking to churches that have thousands and thousands members. And I come back here to Tucson. It's a handful. How is that work? Travel all over the country. Like I'm heading to a church tonight. It's a big church. Heading to Kentucky next week, big churches. But here I come back to do 
good sign. Yes. Why? Because God does not look at what you have. God is looking for his word in you. God is looking for people that say, yes, God, I believe what your word says about me. I believe and I receive it. I'm not going to look about my circumstances. I'm not going to look at what I don't have. I'm going to receive and I'm going to accept what you said about me. So I can be able to fulfill what you call us. I was looking down at all these houses. They have thousand members. And here, I come here. Why? Because God is looking at your heart. If you believe what he said, not what you have. Amen? And he said again, through you, all nations on earth will be blessed. Again, Mauricio, the school is blessed. Because you are there. Why? Because you're carrying the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. All nations on earth will be blessed. When we were in, um, uh, what does the country, when we were in um, Iceland, one of the things that I really wanted to see, because I heard about it, I really wanted to see the Northern Light. Because I had never seen it, and I heard they have Northern Light. As north as you can go, you'll be able to see the Northern Light. So we were there four days, uh, four or five days, and I remember when I got there, we were staying in a Hilton. And because of the status that I have, so I always got the, always got the, top floor and they, I always got a suite and a nice view because of being traveling so much. And I, so I remember when we got there, they gave me a beautiful suite, top floor. And I remember I looked down, I looked at all, my, my view was an ocean. And in my mind I was saying, oh, that's wonderful. Now I be able to see the Northern Light. And I tell you what, night after night, I was not able to see the Northern Light. There were nothing show up. Regardless, yeah, I have all this beautiful view, ocean right in front of me. I didn't see nothing. Night after night, I tried to stay up, didn't see nothing, went bad. So the last night, so we went our last day, we went on a tour, went on a tour to the ice cave. And I remember I asked our tour guide, hey, do you think we'll be able to have any be able to see the, the northern light and he said no we stop because it's past season because it's April right now it's already past the season and we used to have tour tour for the to take people to a place so they can be able to see the northern light but it's no more it's already over but there is one place you can drive about 10 minutes from your hotel you can go but then you try not just sure because it's already past season. You can go over there. Hopefully, you'll be able to see some, anything, but it's I'm not guaranteed because it's already past season. And because I really wanted to see the Northern Light, we run, rushed to our hotel right after because our hotel even provide two. I tell you, I didn't, we didn't even go eat out because our hotel provide two meals every day. It was sushi, all kinds of sushi. It was amazing. And uh, so we rushed to a hotel in there because it was free. And then I told John, please, honey, take me to the place. Hopefully be able to see the Northern Light. We got there in the evening and we said, they were saying, said it come out usually between uh, 12.30 to 1.30 at night. And we got there like, like at night and we were waiting there because waiting until it's pretty dark so we be able, if there is if the northern light come out. So we were waiting, 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 nothing happened. And I was, oh my gosh, two hours, still nothing happened. Mm. So I said, honey, I'm done. Let's go back to our hotel because we have to pack, because haven't packed yet, because you have to get your flight real early in the morning to get back to the US. Mm. So he said, okay. Then I said, but you know what? Let me step out. Just look up and see if I look up to the sky, see if I see any see anything at least. I step out, look up, then I'll get in the car and we go. And he said, Okay. So I step out. The moment I step out of the car and I look up at the sky, 
within a second, all of a sudden, the northern lights start popping out of the sky like fireworks. You know? And there were hundreds and hundreds of cars where they are parking over there, look waiting because they heard if they that's a place if they they can see if they can uh, see the northern light. All of a sudden, the people jumping out from their cars, people running, setting up their tripod, you know, camera, so to be able to take the. Uh, uh, the, the light, and people were just screaming, laughing, so happy that they were able to see the northern light. And I stood there and I enjoyed grabbing my phone, took pictures, and watching the people running back and forth, taking pictures, so happy. God reminded me this scripture. And this is the thought came to my mind. Wow. I should have stepped out two hours ago. <laughs> I should have stepped out And all I was thinking, this happened because I stepped out from the car. The Northern Light must have been waiting for me. They must have been waiting. When are they going to get out from the car so we can show ourselves? But really, we have to think that way. Watching those people enjoying, laughing, setting up their tripod to take a picture. I'm serious. Because I stepped out. Why? I did not say that about myself. God said that about you and I. If you don't think that way, you will be so cut up in your mistake, you'll be so caught up on what you don't have and what you and and, and all the your weaknesses instead of focusing how blessed you are. Amen. Amen. Think that way. These two, they're gonna get married, and I pray that they will look at each other. I am blessed, or you are blessed because of me. <laughs> Amen. Look, think that way about your spouse or your friends, or people that you work with. This workplace are blessed because I'm here. Why? Because the protection of God will be upon Amen. you. Yeah. You'll carry the peace of God. You'll carry, you'll carry the love of God. You'll carry the wisdom of God. Why? Because he said, through you, all nations on earth will be blessed. Amen? I'm not saying that out of arrogance. Oh, who does she think? Who does she think she is to say because she stepped out from the car? Because she could have stepped out two hours ago. Listen, I'm not being arrogant. That false humility to think that way. I'm just struggling to get off my thinking, off of my mind. But to get come and line up my thinking, how God thinks about me. Amen. 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 We got to change the way we think. We need to receive what God said about you and some of us. Yes, ma'am. We believe every word that the doctor said about you and I. Yes, ma'am. Listen, when the doctor said me, oh man, there's cancer in your body. Cancer cell in your body. That is a fact. Can't deny that. They found cancer cell in my body. But his word said, by his stripe, I am a healed. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So I have to make a choice. Yeah. And I'm yeah. gonna, am I going to come in agreement? Yes, what the doctor said is a fact. Am I going to come in agreement with my facts? Or am I going to come in agreement with what he said? Yes. I choose to come in agreement. With what he said. Yeah. By your strength, I am healed. Yeah. Standing up here this morning, yeah. cancer free, yeah. delivered from sickness. Why? Because I choose to come in agreement with what he said about me, not what my facts said yes. about me. And God wants you and I to do the same thing that through your life, Everyone you come in contact with, 
will be blessed. I have to sing that way. Hallelujah. What a privilege. What an honor. Let me tell you what. I take it serious. When God gave us the privilege to travel over the country, basically the world, I know I have to change my thinking. If I love people, if I love God, I have to change the way I think to line up and come in agreement with what God said about me, not my crisis, not my problem, so I can be able to witness, I can be able to encourage, I can be able to speak to the body of Christ. Amen? The word that the Lord gave me and wanted me to share with you this morning of how important, like what I said or shared earlier, how important it is for you and I to love God and love people. What's in, in God? What's in God's heart is for you and I to love people. Because we can say, I love God, I love God, I love God. But if we mistreat his people, sorry. I'm not going to believe a word you wow. say. Yeah. Amen. If you treat God's people, I remember when I stand up the other night in Honolulu speaking, like what I said, I was just in awe. Oh my gosh, all these people are doctors. <laughs> I am nothing. And I would say, wow, what, a, what an honor to speak to these people. And the Lord reminded me, he said, Meliana, if you continue, I wanted to show my love through you, to everyone you come in contact with. You don't need a doctor for that. You don't need a PhD to love people. You don't need a degree to treat people with honor and respect. Why? Because they're created in God's image. And that's all God is looking for. The best example that I tell you, the person, in, uh, a story in the Bible for a person that loved God so much is Peter. Because we knew the scripture talk about when he found out that it was Jesus on shore, he jumped out of the boat. Boat was heading shore anyway. He jumped out of the boat and swam to shore. He beat the boat to shore. Why? Because when he found out it was Jesus, he got out from his comfortability. He got out from what he got used to. He got out from what familiar we knew. The Bible said that he does not know how to swim because he sank, right? But he swam to shore. Let me tell you what, when you love a person so much, you do things that you never done before. Amen? And that's what Peter did. He loved Jesus so much, he jumped out of the boat, swam to shore. Because he wanted to be the first one that got to Jesus. Yeah. He wanted to be the first one. But guess what? When he got there, when he got to Jesus, Jesus asked him three questions. Same question. He said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes. I love you. But listen to what God said. If you love me, then take care of my people. If you love me, then tend to my people. If you love me, feed my people. What's in God's heart? It's his people. Why? Because he wants you and I to reflect who he is by how we love God's people, Amen. how we treat them, how we honor them. Let me tell you what, you can make a lot of mistakes, but when you love people, because his word said that love covers a multitude of sin. And I pray, God, fill my heart. Let me tell you what, yes, we're so tired, flying all night, flying all the way from Iceland, Rushing to stop by in California, spoke there three times in one church, Sunday, twice on Sunday morning, one on Sunday night. Get up early on the, uh, Monday, fly all the way to Hawaii, rush over there to speak at the conference. Do we abuse somebody? No, it's the love in us for God's people to use whatever the gift that we have 
to feed his spirit. Let me tell you what. When you love God so much, the result of loving God is loving people. The result of loving God is loving people. It's hard for you to get upset with people when you love them. I'm not saying that you come in agreement with sin. I'm not saying you come in agreement with bad behavior. No. Those situations, it has to be addressed. Sometimes there are situations in churches it need to be addressed. But we need to address it to restore them back into right relationship with God. Not to address them to destroy them, but to address them to restore them into the right relationship with God. Amen? Again, getting back to Peter. Amen. All Jesus said, Peter, if you really, really love me, you are going to take care of my people. You're going to love my people. You're going to feed my people. Same thing as I have shared earlier about the centurion when they came and begged Jesus, Jesus, please come and heal his servant. Look what he did. He loved our people. Again, when you love people, you move in action. It's not just by word. Oh, I love the church. <coughs> oh, I love Citadel. No, we will move by action. What is the centurion action? He built them churches. He give. He use his gifts. He use his money. He use his talent to give, to serve, to build. And by God, Use the little bit that I have. I travel over the world. I travel over the country. If I can get up, couple minutes, five minutes, build your people, encourage your people with the little bit that I have, I am blessed. Yeah. And I pray, oh God, thank you. Thank you. And listen, the result of loving people, the result of serving and using the gifts that you have to build his people, build churches. Churches mean, yes, not only the building. For me, churches is the people. Because if people is not in it's not inside the church, it's just a building. Amen. That's why it's so important. We need to love each other. We need to encourage each other. Be filled with joy. Be filled with love. Amen? Amen. Because when we do that, we tell you what, when we have that attitude, when we have that, that desire, when we have that character of lo <coughs> loving God and loving people, guess what God will do? He'll impart to you great faith. Let me read you the scripture. <clears throat> that is so. Because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. They told Jesus that. Let me read the whole the whole verse again, verse 4. He said, They came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this. I remember when I, I post a picture of my view from the hotel when I was in, um, in uh, Iceland, and I said, this would be so nice right when I first arrived. This would be so nice with this view to be able to see the Northern Light. And of course, I did not see the Northern Light when I was in my hotel, but I thought about it. God did not allow me to see the Northern Light in my hotel room. Why? Because only me gonna enjoy it. But He allowed me to get into that park, whatever, whatever place I was, and everybody there got to enjoy the Northern Light. And I remember, so when I post that picture, I post it in my story on, on social media, and I have a friend of mine respond, and she said, "Meliana, I'm gonna pray for you that you will be able 
to see the northern light while you are there in Iceland because you deserve it. And I said, oh my gosh. And when I read this scripture, it said, they said, Jesus, you, this man deserved for you to go and heal his servant because of what he did. Amen? I pray that we all have that heart. When we see each other, we'll pray, God, I pray that you heal my friend. I pray that you deliver my friend because they because of what they have done. And so Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent a friend to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. One character I found about the people that love, about the leaders or people that love God and love people. You know, you know what I know about their caring character? They so honor. They honor each other. There's such a character in them. That's why I said, I'm not worthy for you to come over to my house. But if you can just say the word, my servant will be healed. I pray that we can, when we love God, love people, God will change our character that we will honor those who are in authority. Amen? Amen. And he said, for I myself, a man under authority, with soldiers under me, I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does this. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd, following him, and he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith, even in Israel. Then men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Verse 9, it says, Jesus said, he was, um, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. I love God to be amazed. How would you like that God will be amazed at your faith? Hey, I'm grateful that my pastor was so thankful, called us, asked us to please if we can come to the dinner because he wanted to honor us for giving, being a part of the largest group that giving to the ministry. I'm grateful for that. But to have God amazed at you, that's what I want. You can be amazed at us, you travel. Big deal. But to have God amazed at your action. Who you want to impress is God. We cannot. Sometimes we are wasting so much time trying to amaze our friends. Trying to amaze people at church. Listen. Big deal. The person we need to do a we need to be amazed at us is God. The person we need to impress is God himself. Why? Because we cannot, I mean, each other, we cannot heal each other. Our friends cannot do nothing at us. But it's God who can heal us, transform us. Amen? And he said, praise God. Even God said, I haven't seen anyone in Israel have such great faith. I want God to say that about you guys. Amen? I want God to say that about Teresa. <laughs> I want God to say that about all of you here this morning. Man, she had great faith. I had never seen that kind of faith in Tucson. They are so faithful. Small church, yet they are so faithful. They are serving like a big church. You know? They show up and continue to serve like a big church. I tell you what, when we go to big churches, you guys act like big church. And I'm grateful for that. 
showing up on time, early morning prayer. I mean, some big churches I go to, I know they don't have they don't have that privilege that we have having early morning prayer. But I am so grateful that you guys have great faith. Amen. <laughs> Coming to to our church, why? Because God wanted to display how great He is in your life and my life. Amen? Amen. And guess what? God can help. But to take care, give the centurion what he needs. As I read at the end, that servant, right when the centurion said, Oh, I'm not worthy for you to come over. Just say the word. Let me tell you what. That is faith. I pray that we have that kind of faith. God, just, I believe what you, any word that you say, I believe it. I believe whatever you say, that the worship team, Lord, whatever the worship team sing this morning, I believe it. Whatever the preacher said that on Wednesday, I believe it. Whatever they're going to say, I will believe it. That is great faith. Let me tell you what, it will move God in your behalf. Why? Because you love people. Yes. I remember when uh, about a few years ago, my oldest brother used to work for the government of Tonga, and he was a member of the he was one of the member of the parliament. And I remember um, the Queen of Tonga was visiting Hawaii, and John and I we went Hawaii ministering in Hawaii. And my brother he retired from working for the for the parliament, and he moved to Hawaii and he lived there with his family. And when he found out that the Queen of Tonga was visiting Hawaii, because he knew them, he because they when he used to travel with them together to England. So he called John and I. He said, "Oh, uh, uh, Milena, do you guys want to meet the Queen? I had never met her. I had never met a a royalty, you know." And I said, "Yeah." And he said, "The Queen of Tonga is here. He's staying in a hotel in Alamoana Hotel." If you guys want to meet me at two o'clock at, at this hotel in Alamon Hotel, I'll have you guys meet the queen. I said, "Wow, are you are you sure?" He said, "Yes." I was running. I was out in Waikiki. I was jogging. I tell you what, I dropped everything I was doing, turned around, ran all the way. Everything was a couple miles away from my uh, hotel. Rain all the way to my hotel. I thought about this. My gosh, I wish we do that. When we knew that, oh, church this morning at 10, we'll stop everything we do. Make sure we rush to church. Amen? Amen. So, anyway, but guess what? We do that for earthly queen or earthly uh, leaders. So, I stopped and dropped everything I did, ran to my hotel, got ready, put on my vest. John and I got to the hotel. And I remember when we walked in, we were. I remember in Tonga, if if there is a if you are in a in a presence of a royalty, you sit down on the floor. I did. I walked in, sat down on the floor. John sat on the chair right next to the queen, and uh, my brother was talking. And my brother turned to my uh, to John, and he said, "John, do you mind uh, praying for the queen?" So John got up and moved closer to her and laid his hand on her hand and started praying and prophesying for her. Prophesying over her, it was a powerful word. And right after he prayed and prophesied, she was sobbing, she was crying, and we were asked not to take picture because, uh, of course, you know, we were in uh, in her uh, presence. And I remember right after that, and uh, right after John prayed and prophesied over her, the queen turned to my uh, brother, if he's, he's turned to talk, and my brother brought a request to the queen. And this was the request. Uh, your royal highness, my request was because I'm heading to Tonga next month. And I'm heading to this island, this island called Ewa. And I wanted to create this job. And I know that some of the people will reject, might reject what I wanted to do. But I wanted to see if you can put your endorsement on what I wanted to do so that way more people can get involved. Right after <laughs> what my brother said, immediately the queen, it was like she perked up 
And she looked at my brother and she said, when are you going there? My brother said, next month. And she said, give me the day. I'll meet you in Ewa, the day that you're going to go over there. Uh -huh. And I was amazed. And all of a sudden, the Lord reminded me this story about the centurion. Why did the queen want to go to that island? Why? Because my brother wanted to go over there and create a job to help the people of Tonga in that island. And I thought about it. God, he will endorse what you are doing. He will bless you. He will prosper you when he sees that your heart is loving people. Yeah. When you see your heart is helping people. Amen? Let me tell you what. We could, why? Because there'll be a time, a situation, you'll face crisis, do you face problem? That's when you need God to intervene. Amen? Amen? But if you love God, the overflow of you loving God, you will love people. Amen? Yeah. And I pray, oh God, help me to continue to love people. Because let me tell you what, I believe the only reason why John and I continue to be on the road because God had placed such love in our heart to love people, love his churches. Because you know what? The moment we stop loving people, the moment we stop loving God, we're done. We are replaceable. God have no problem replacing preacher. God have no problem replacing evangelists when we don't love his people. That's why I pray, oh God, because when we love people, we will not abuse his people. We will honor his people. The best example was Saul. He was so disrespectful. God. How did we know he disrespect God? He did not listen to the word that was given him by Samuel. Samuel told him, wait, don't give the sacrifice until I get there. Oh, I'll do my own thing. Now I'm the king. I'm the leader. I'll do my own thing. And he did. He did his own thing. Disrespect, dishonor. Those that God sent to help him out. And right after that, guess what? He got replaced by David. I said, God, I don't want to be replaced. Yes, you can raise up people that can speak better, articulate the, the, the subject better. But I pray, oh God, just help me to love people. Just help me to love you. Just help me to love people. Because in my day of crisis, in the day that I have problem, that no one else can help me, I will cry out. And you will show up and deliver me. You will show up and heal me. Amen? Amen. And I believe that's what God wants you and I to do. This morning, let me tell you what, this church will be full if we continue to allow the love of God. When people walk in their first time, just love on them. Amen? Just embrace them. God loves you. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be the preacher to love on people. Yeah. Just walk up to them. Hey, great to have you here today. So glad you came today. And tell you what, People would like to be around on an atmosphere that is full with love. Amen? Amen. I'm going to speak a, a, share a powerful story. Uh, uh, the guy from our John Maxwell team, that there was a guy, a, a little kid, that he showed up in their um, church. Uh, he was invited. He came in a bus. He would show up over there. He was a teenager, I think. And the people in his church just pour on love on him, loving on him. And then they all left, but then he still hang around over there. The little kid just hang around over there. The pastor found him outside the parking lot. And he asked him, son, what are you doing here? Why are you not going to come going home? And you know what he said? I have never find a place 
that I have been so loved, so embraced. Everybody here embraced me. Everybody here told me that they love me. And I just want to be here. I have been already gone. <laughs> I just want to stay here and enjoy that feeling that I had never experienced. Let me tell you what, when we do that, when we love God, when we love people, this church will be full. Not so, oh, look at what we're done. No, the people need to be embraced. The people need to be loved. Why people, why do our children and grandchildren turn into drugs, alcohol? I mean, uh, sexual sin, why? Because we are so caught up in our own things. Instead of embracing them, instead of loving them, showing them the love of God. And I believe God wants you and I to do the same thing. Amen? Amen. This morning, love God and love people. Amen? And that is the desire of God for you and I to display who he is. And be a person that through you, all nations on earth will be biased. Amen? I mean, like what I said, God, if you can just fill me with so much love for you that through my life, everywhere I go, people will be protected in the plane because I know this plane will make it there because I'm in a plane. Just like what his word says, Mariana, through you. Everybody will be blessed. And you have to think that way about your life. You cannot afford. Oh, that, that is not going to apply to me. I make too many mistakes. That is not going to apply to me. Look where I live. That is not going to apply to me. Look at what I have done. But if you repent and turn to God, God wants to use you to be a blessing. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to use you to be a blessing. He wants to display his kindness. His word says, I'm looking for a man and a woman so I can show myself strong, so I can display the goodness of God, so I can display the healing of God, so I can display the love of God, so I can display how good God is is and why not be you young man don't think that you are young amen god can use you to witness to your generation you have a generation and i believe god is looking all he's looking for for your yes amen yes and i believe god wants to do the same thing for all of us this morning so let's all lift up our hand to him Thank you, Jesus. Let all, let's all stand up together. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. I feel like I want to give a call this morning. I feel like that God wants to use some of you this morning to display the faith that this centurion had. And all God is looking for, men and women, said, I'm going to love people. First of all, I'm going to love God. And out of my love for God, I'm going to love people. And if you want to have the faith that the centurion had, if you want the faith that will amaze, if you want to have the faith that will impress God, not your friends, raise your hand. You say, Mariana, that's me. Those of you that raise your hand, I want you to come up to the front. You're not coming up to me. You're coming up and saying, God, I want that kind of faith. 